The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. Thank you, Jesus. What a beautiful night. What a beautiful night. You know, um, I know most of you were here this morning. Some of you weren't. I'm going to do part two. And, um, you know, it's so awesome when you can testify what the Lord's done because he gets all the glory. I mean, that's the bottom line. He gets all the glory. It's him that does it. We have to yield. We have to obey. But ultimately, God gets all the glory. And it's just, I'll just say this starting off. You never know how much God is helping you till you're through the other side. Um, Like with a lot of the massive events that Dr. Ronnie's heard from God, Pastors Ronnie and Adonica, and they floored it, and in the midst of it, it's like, how in the world is this going to happen? And then, of course, it does happen, like Good News New York and many other things. And then when you look back at it, you knew the Lord was helping you. You knew it was a miracle, but you didn't actually realize how much you were being helped Till you were through the other side. Do you know what I'm saying? That's why the Bible says, do not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you do not faint. And uh, this morning I started off, I, I was, I was, I told Pastor Rodney, I, I looked down at my, um, <clears throat> at my phone and I realized it was September 1st, not this morning, but you know, a few days ago. And in September 1st, 25 years ago was the first day of the River Bible Institute. Matter of fact, he started the church in December of 96. So watch how fast this goes. December 96, the first service, (laughs) and you fast forward, what, nine months, and you have the Bible school starting. So that's how everything happened. So we're charged, Jennifer and I are charter class graduates uh, and uh, started Bible college September 1st. Uh, 1997. So let's pick it up, and I'm going to tell a few things that happened in part two, and uh, and um, open your Bibles to First Chronicles chapter 21. You know, I started there this morning talking about uh, David, and David is a man after God's own heart, and uh, I really appreciate David. He was real. You could see different things that he went through. He had great victories, but he also uh, had some mistakes, and he learned from it. But if you go to First Chronicles 21, um, it says in verse 16, it says, David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heavens, having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders clothed in sackcloth uh, fell upon their faces. Now, the, the problem was David numbered the people. David made a mistake. You know, he loved God with all of his heart. You guys know everything that he went through. And uh, so there he is. He made a mistake. Here's an angel 500 feet tall looking at a mean with a sword drawn, ready to take him out. And, of course, he fell on his face. And we'll find out in a minute that he, he puts together an offering. He says, Lord, don't let me take the responsibility, not the people. But one thing I wanted to show you was verse 1. And, and this is the thing that you got to be careful of. Uh, First Chronicles 21.1, it says, Satan, an adversary, stood up against Israel and stirred up David to number Israel. So the enemy will come and stir things up in you and try to get you to go in a different path. And that's what Dave happened to David. He was got full of pride. He said, man, let me see how many people I got. He numbered the people and made a mistake. But if you repent, if you turn around, as Pastor Tom was saying, whatever you're doing, turn the other way, then God always has a way of escape or a way of deliverance for you. Can you say amen? So David numbers the people. He makes a mistake. And then if you go down to verse 22, then David said to Ornan, and grant unto me this threshing floor that I may build an altar on it to the Lord. You shall charge me full price for it that the plague may be averted from the people. And then verse 23 says, Ornan said to David, take it and let the Lord do 
uh, let the Lord thy king do what is good in thy eyes. I give the oxen the burnt offerings and the threshing sledges and wood and the wheat and the meal offerings. I give it all. I want to say this. Very few, very few times do you run into two givers like that. You got David that goes on to say, I'll just read the next verse. He says, and King David said to Ornan, no. But I will pay full price. I will not take what is yours for the Lord, nor burnt offerings, which cost me nothing. So here you have Ornan saying, man, hold on a second. Is this for the Lord? I'm not charging you a penny. You had two people. The Bible says where your treasure is, there is your heart. You had two people that were totally sold out to God, that would do whatever it took to, to please God. And so they got into a giving war. And a lot of times I talk about people that, you know, Pastor Rodney on the road getting into a given war. I'm going to go talk a little bit about our story today. But I give it all. I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. So the enemy will come and tell you not to give. Just like in verse 1, the enemy will come and stir things up. The number one reason, other than people not loving God, that people don't give, is because of fear. Because they think, well, if I do what God is saying, even though they know it's the Lord, they feel they won't have enough. So they don't give, and they don't tithe, they don't bring authors in because they're actually full of fear. And that comes from the enemy. The Lord's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So when the Lord speaks to you about a seed, he has a harvest in mind. And, and so you gotta yield to the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? So what happened with Jennifer and I is um, we were, you know, called into business, making a lot of money. The Lord was blessing us. The Lord, as we started to step out, we tithed. We started tithing for the first time. The Lord tripled our income. And I'm just going to come down here and just flow a little bit. So the Lord tripled our income. We put up Mark 11, 23, 24. We started to become kingdom people, real kingdom people. I mean, Yes, whatever we put our hand to shall prosper. Yes, remember the Lord thy God. He shall give you the anointing, the power, the ability to create wealth. We had the anointing to create wealth. We were totally sold out. My wife gets on a, as you heard this morning, she went on a quest for God. She went on a serious quest for God and left for two months. My wife left me for two months, okay? So, but it was all good on search for God. Has a great encounter. You know, in Drs. Rodney and Adonica's meetings on the road, she had a great encounter with God. Then you guys know, I flew to find out what was going on. I had an encounter. Little did I know that that touch would change our lives forever for the rest of our lives. Because revival is not just about a touch, it's about a change. So my, what we're radically sowing, my wife is radically sowing. Then as you heard, I started, started touching serious treasure. They're not really saying, what about your car? Like my real special muscle car, my old car, then my wife's bracelet and different things. And we started, we didn't realize the Lord was actually seeing if he could trust us. Even seeing if we would obey his voice really is what would happen. You know, because if you're not faithful in unrighteous mammon, who will trust you with the true riches? See, if you're not faithful with money, then you're going to be entrusted with the supernatural power of God? Really? Absolutely not. You know, where your treasure is, there's your heart. So I'm going to fast forward a little. So then we sowed ourselves into the offerings. We said, Lord, what's the best gift we have? The Lord said, you and your wife and your, 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 wife and, you and your talents and your abilities. We sowed ourselves in. We opened our house up. I had an emergency meeting in my business uh, and said, guys, I'm out of here. This was July of 97. School started September 1st of 97. Some of y'all that just answered the call for school, you got all the way till January. Man, you got a life, you got a tons of time. We had like five weeks. We go back, had an emergency meeting. I said, guys, God called me in the ministry. I did an altar call, had about 30 or 40 people come, even Jewish people, the fire of God fell. And that's how we left our business. We had a revival meeting and said, guys, we're out of here. Boom. That's how we got called in the ministry. Then we had to take the ballast off of things that we had. We opened up our house. We said, take everything. It's true. It's a fact. And there was a peace and a grace for it. We gave away everything. People came with moving trucks, everything. If you ever want to move and wonder how you're going to get everything out, just give it all away and people will come and you won't even have to hire a moving truck. It's not really a problem. And so they took every, you know, took every, everything. 
You know, and which was fine. We didn't, not, not one, I promise you before the Lord, there wasn't one thing that we loosed that we got rid of that we cried over or said, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. No, it was all the Lord. It, actually, the things of God became so much more important to us than things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and these things will come. That there was a great joy in it that we were changing our whole life and going to Bible college. So then we loosed everything. Of course, everybody thought we were nuts and crazy, multi-million dollar company, all these people working. And the Lord really had to speak to me because when I went to the Lord and wrote that letter, impossible reasons to go to Bible college, I was in, not in my spirit, I was in my natural mind. Because, it, and it makes sense, if you think about it in the natural, I said stuff like this to the Lord. I said, Lord, what about all these people that work for us? I mean, really, is it right for me, for all of those people to lose their job? I mean, so you see how I was talking to the Lord. I said, it's not, I mean, what, what about them? I got people that have worked for me for years. What, what's going to happen to these people? Who's going to pay them? So, I mean, this is me talking in the natural to God. I said, look, my personal overhead's 30 grand a month. I, and so I started listing all these reasons why God must have forgot he must have forgot these things because there's no way we were called to Bible college, you know. So I wrote all these things down, and the Lord really spoke to me and said, are you their source or am I their source? I wasn't their source. I wasn't those people's source. God was their source. So what am I saying? Oh, well, if I go in the ministry, then everybody's going to, God's not going to take care of them. No, God's their source, not me. And so I had that encounter with God. We came and we sewed ourselves in to the ministry. And you know, David said, I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. And Ornan said, I give it all. When you get to a place like that, that not truly before the Lord, that not anything that you have means anything to you, if the Lord required it, you would free it up, then you're in a good place. If there's anything that you have, if the Lord, and I'm not talking about manipulation or some crazy thing about, I'm talking about the Lord says do that, that you can't lose, it is an idol that you worship. Now, I know that's bold talk, and people might think, oh, that's just a little too, no, it's not too strong. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. By virtue of creation, everything is His. If the Lord says there's a reason why He would speak to you about something, why would He would to rob you, to make you feel bad, to rip you off? That's not the God we serve. It's because, it, because the seed you sow determine how far you go. The seed you sow determine where you go. It's a fact. So fast forward, we're in Bible school, September 1st. A lot of people don't know this story. The first year of Bible college, there was the roof, there was no ceiling, there was no carpet, the place was under major construction, it was in a strip mall. We were actually, three, four doors down was a bar, there was a pawn shop across the, right on the corner. I mean, you talk about a fishing hole, the Bible college was in a perfect fishing hole for souls, ain't no doubt about it. We'd go down to the bingo hall and win souls, it was awesome. It's like four doors down was the big bingo hall, I mean, that place was packed. That's a great fishing hole. So we're in Bible college during that time, and little did I know till I look back, the seed you sow will determine how far you go. So now we're in Bible college. We had a little, we got rid of everything, sold everything, gave everything away, and the, and the Lord kept dealing with me about, about, you know, do not give me an offering that won't, that doesn't cost you anything. And then, so the one, we had a couple nest eggs. I owned a finance company because I was in business and I would own my own finance company. And, and then all of a sudden, we're in first quarter Bible school. Even though I left everything, the Lord starts speaking to me and says, forgive everybody's debt. Now, this wasn't a Christian. <laughs> this wasn't, a, this, this was, I mean, I'm a Christian, but it wasn't, it wasn't loans to Christians. I mean, it was a regular business. It was a finance company. And then I was praying to my wife. I said, Lord, what can we do? What can we give? We were so radical. And then the Lord said, forgive everybody's debt. I look at my wife and, you know, that was money coming in every month. And so I look at my wife. We prayed about it. And then we wrote a letter to every single person that we had financed loans with. And there was tons of them. And we wrote a letter saying, the Lord called us into Bible school. We, we've changed everything that we're doing now. And the Lord spoke to us to tell you that God loves you and he has a plan for you. And we forgave every single person's debt in the entire finance company, in that in our entire. Because I was going to sell it. I was going to sell the paper. 
You know, because you can sell the paper, you know. And, and, but no, the Lord said, don't sell it, give it. So listen, the seed you sow determine how far you go. That's the bottom line. As long as the earth remains, there's seed, time, and harvest. So we forgave everyone's debt in, in the entire finance company, that our finance company. And then we come to Bible school and just helping you with a few things. We come to Bible school, and in the first quarter of Bible school, I get, I'm in charge of stacking the chairs. My wife's in charge of actually the flowers. The very first pulpit that ever came into the Bible school was a clear pulpit, said River Bible Institute. I was the person that pulled the plastic, the, the sheet of paper off of it, and was getting a special acrylic liquid that you had to polish it. That was my first job. And I'm going to tell you, I, it was kind of hard for me to focus on the instructors because I would see them slap the pulpit and stuff, and I'm saying, man, look at all those fingerprints. This is terrible. I mean, the guy's grabbing it, shaking it, you know? And so right after the, the, the one instructor left, I would run up there with a the little spray. Shh, shh. I'd, be, I'd be underneath the thing, and I promise you, I always said the same thing. Lord, I thank you I'll be faithful with a little. You'll make me rule over much. Thank you I'll be faithful with a little. And I would get under that thing, and then there was a way that you had to buff the scratches out. I mean, my job was the pulpit. Bless God, that pulpit was going to look better than any pulpit ever looked in its life. And that was my job. My wife was in charge of the flowers. Man, every time she ran up there, she was pulling the flowers out and everything. But it was a great honor and a great privilege to do that. Then I got, as an usher, and, and then my wife got put in charge of the ready room on leading up to this. It was a little ready room in the back of Bible school right back there. And uh, I mean, and the, because I'm talking about you go where you sow, and I'll not give you a Lord, Lord an offering that costs you nothing. I want you to realize we came from a multi-million dollar company where we had pretty much anything we wanted. And the Lord blessed us to sowing everything. We're in first quarter Bible school sowing extremely radically. Not in business anymore. Someone said, what do you mean? Well, there was tuition when Bible school started. We paid, thank God we did this. We paid our year's tuition up front, both of us. But then there was all these Bible school students that didn't have money for tuition. And they became our friends. And they were like, oh, Jesus, I got tuition. Because every week you'd have a line of people and you'd have to, the dean would meet with them and say, okay, how are you going to pay? I mean, it was, it was the way it was. And so then we started paying people's tuition in full all the time. My wife would come to me, honey, you know, so-and-so, yes, yeah, Sally, yeah. She doesn't have tuition. Ah, praise God. You know, we just paid in full. So we're paying, we're paying all this money in Bible school, paying people's tuition, their rent, crazy stuff. Then my wife gets in charge of the ready room. And, I mean, you guys don't, they had no idea. They didn't really know us. We didn't really know them as far as like, you know, we're students. They're pastors, Rodney and Adonica. My wife gets in charge of the ready room. My wife said, man, we got to take this thing to the next level. She bought all the furniture for the ready room. She bought all the appliances for the ready room. She bought all, uh, every bit of the drinks, everything. She bought everything, bought everything for the ready room. And then she would call ahead, because back then it'd be a different speaker each week, pretty much in Bible school a long time ago. And she would call their ministries ahead of time. What do they like to drink? What do they eat? So whenever they came in, when you opened the refrigerator, it had the exact type of drink they wanted, the exact type of snacks they ate, and everything. And they didn't know this, but we did it unto the Lord. But my wife funded the entire ready room, every bit of it. And so we were sowing radically, Lord, we'll be faithful a little, we'll be ruler over much. Then I moved up to head usher and the whole thing. So we were just plugging in and plugging in and just pressing in and sowing radically. Then they didn't have chairs for the Bible school. And so pastors preaching and there wasn't any chairs. I mean, so then I remember one time they said, listen, we're going to receive an offer. We're just going to knock these chairs out. My wife sewed her wedding ring. My wife sewed so many wedding rings, it's unbelievable. But I mean, she took her very special wedding. It was one of the few things we had, you know, that we hadn't sewed. And she sewed her wedding ring. And I don't think Pastor Ronnie and Donica have heard probably any of these stories or many of these stories ever because... You know, but this is, I'm trying to give you an idea of what happened. And so we sowed towards the chairs in the Bible school. You go where you sow. And then we were the right-hand people to the dean at that time, just plugging in, doing whatever it took. And of course, that's how we got noticed because we were always serving and doing things when doctors, Dr. Rodney came off the platform after one year of Bible school. 
Instead, I want you guys to pray about going in the, you know, coming on with me in the road. Well, the Lord had already spoke to my wife four months ahead of time that we're going to be hired. We're going to go around the world. We got our passports, packed our bags. This is a true story. Four months before we ever graduated, we already had our bags by the front door in our passports. Fact. But we never did faith without hints is dead. We didn't put it, I didn't put an application into the ministry. I didn't pull them to the side and say, hey, I'm your man. Nothing. It was just the Lord, you know. Your gift will make a way. The Lord promotes, right? So I'm leading up to something, and I'm telling a, a story because it's, it's, it's so emotional 25 years later. This is kind of the story of what's happened. And so then when he came off and said, I want you to pray about it, and we started jumping up and down, especially my wife. No, no, we don't need to pray. We know. And she told him the whole story. And he said, listen, let me just help you with something. We're going to get into some really, really crazy situations. And you better know that you know that you know that you're called of God because we're going to get into some tough situations. He says, no, I'm not going to accept your answer. Pray for three days and let me know. And it was only two days. And we said, hey, we can't go another day. We're going. And thank God we had our passports and thank God we had our bags packed because I'll be honest with you, when we hit the road, you're talking back then, two meetings a day, six days a week, 46 weeks of the year, different cities, different country, year after year after year after year. It was awesome. Went around the world. And, but here's what I wanted to lead up to. We talk about, I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. I will give it all. And he, even though we were in, right before we got hired in Bible college, now this is a true story, I know this sounds crazy, we were giving so radically that we actually ran out of money. I'm talking about just within the first quarter of Bible school, we didn't have any money left. I know, I just, I know it's crazy, man. So, I mean, we were just, I mean, guest speakers would come in, I'd like, praise God, it's a man of God, 5,000, 5,000. I mean, just, it was just, it was just the way it was, you know? And um, then while we had people all come into our house because Bible school students didn't have any food to eat, so we were feeding everybody, and they'd come to our house, and the next thing you know, we go to get something, and my wife's like, I'm like, honey, we, we, don't, have any, <laughs> we don't have any money left. And this is the crazy part, and the Lord was teaching us. And we had to take, this is a true story, we had to take some of our food back to the grocery store that we had an abundance of like green beans and stuff to switch it out for other things because we actually ran out. We, when I say I give it all, we sowed it all. And we didn't even plan to do it like that. We left everything and came, but we had this little nest egg, but that nest egg was gone in the first quarter of Bible college. But listen, no seed ever goes unnoticed. So we actually were in a place that we didn't have any money. Then supernaturally, God started bringing in the resources everything. We were able to get through Bible college, live by faith, press in. I mean, supernaturally, God took care of us. Now we're in the ministry. In 1998, we get hired. Then Dr. Rodney has a dream. And when he ever gets up and says, the Lord spoke to me, most people on staff grab the side of their pants or whatever or their chair because you never know what roller coaster you're about to go into. Uh, I mean, you need to have the gift of faith on you as, as a church or a staff when the Lord speaks to them because it's an all or nothing thing. And he said he had a dream to go to New York and uh, to launch one of the biggest soul winning crusades since the 50s. Actually, in that process, we were still uh, in, um, you know, the church at that time, not on staff at that time. And when you came back and announced it, he announced it on a Sunday morning in the church. And it was, and we sowed ten thousand dollars towards the Good News New York, and said, "Lord, we want to be a part of this." It was one of the last seeds we had of money that we had left, and we sowed it towards Good News New York. When we heard that he wanted to go to New York and launch one of the biggest, we said, "Lord, we want to be a part." Little did I know that you're, you, where, whatever, wherever you sow, you go. Little did I know that they would send us to New York for six months for that crusade. We ended up, we were on the road, and the next thing you know, he has a dream, and he sends Jennifer and I to New York. We lived six months in New York, had the honor and privilege of working with Madison Square Garden and the whole teams and everything for New York. So we lived there for six months. You go where you sow. So little did we know as we were sowing radically towards even that dream for the garden that ended up with 48,459 decisions and my wife getting a download from heaven with the gospel, soul and his scripture card and all the different things that little did we know that as we sowed radically, 
I give it all. I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me anything. That we would actually go into that crusade that we sowed into. And in our life, this is how it's always been. We were sowing radically into the Bible college after that. We were sowing radically, doing everything we could because, man, our life was changed by going to Bible school. Because we came to Bible school and got equipped and trained to go to the nations and go into the world. Then Pastor Rodney comes out, there was a lot of problems in Bible school at the time with just different things that were happening. And he was on the road and, you know, you're close, you're just talking. He goes, man, I don't need this. You know, I'm talking about every week on the road, different city, different country. He was like, man, maybe I should just shut the Bible school down. Maybe I should just, you know, I mean, I, I got so much going on. There, there was just some problems at the time. And then I said to him, I said, Pastor Rodney, you can't shut the Bible school down. I said, I said, well, I said look, there's fruit. There's some problems, but look, we're fruit of the Bible school. And then he looks at me and goes, okay, you're the dean. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I promise you, I went like this. No, 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 no. It's not what I was saying. No, 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 no. I promise you, I never wanted, I'm, I, and he goes, no, okay, you go in and run it. So Jennifer and I became the deans of the Bible college. That's how we became the deans of the Bible college. But we had sowed radically. You go where you sow. I will not give the Lord an offering to cost me nothing. So we were actually the deans of the Bible college for three years and on the road. Jessica was one of our right, Pastor Kenneth's wife, Pastor Jessica was one of our right-hand people in Bible college because we had to use Bible school students at that time as the administration. It was just crazy. I mean, there was some administration, but it was just a little different. And her sister at the time, but you go where you sow. Your seeds determine how far you go. I will not give a Lord an offering that costs me nothing. I give it all. So don't ever underestimate the power of a seed because it produces. I have a million more testimonies like this, but then when Kelly died, when his, their daughter died on Christmas morning, and he put her on the altar, and he vowed, when, he, when, when that happened, he said, devil, you're not going to have my daughter. I vowed today 100 million souls for the kingdom of God and $1 billion in world missions. And man, that so impacted us. Then the Lord spoke to him about going to Africa to launch these mass crusades. And we just prayed, Jennifer and I prayed and said, Lord, what can we do? We want to be a part of Africa. Lord, we, we want to get souls saved. And we sowed $10,000 into that crusade. Now, mind you, I'm not a multimillionaire in a business now. I'm on staff, a salary, not running any businesses, believe in God, put seed in the ground, harvest coming in. I don't know why 10,000 was always a number for us. The only problem is we didn't really have that many times. So we just stepped out in faith, but we put $10,000 into Soweto. Little did I know, Pastor Rodney said, oh yeah, and you guys are gonna go there and run the whole thing. So we went to Africa and ran the mass crusades as the crusade directors. The seeds you sow determine how far you go. The seeds you sow determine where you go. I will not give the Lord an offer. Now mind you, that wasn't a hundred bucks. Now, if that's all we had, that would be a massive offering. But, I mean, listen, that's why David said, I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. You can't go to the, the, the king of glory. You can't go to the Alpha and Omega. You can't go to the creator of all things and tip them like you do a waitress. There's times the Lord speaks to you about sacrificial things. And we sowed and we went to that crusade. There's so many more stories. And then the end result is in those four crusades, 700,000 decisions. And then we were a part of it, not only financially, but in the labor side, in the organization of things. There's many times the Lord has spoke to us about doing supernatural things. And that's why I started off saying, when you look back, you realize how much the Lord helped you. But I can tell you every significant thing that ever happened in our life happened with a significant seed before that happened. But at the time, you never knew what the future was. I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. I give it all. And many times as the Lord stirs you and puts in your spirit to do something that might look ridiculous to your head, it's basically a setup for what God has for you. And he just wants to see, will you be obedient? Because if you're not faithful with unrighteous mammon, how in the world is he going to trust you with the true riches? I've had the honor and privilege now of traveling 
all over the world with Dr. Ronnie, he always, especially when he does revivals, he'll say something like this. I have never seen a church break open a revival that didn't break open and give him. Always, because where your treasure is, there is your heart. You can't, if you're not open to giving, you're not open to the move of the Holy Spirit because everything's got to be about control. It's about the Holy Spirit controlling you, not you controlling the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? So I'm just here to tell you guys, look, it's a journey. But David said, I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. I, and, and Ornan said, I give it all. You need to be at a place where you allow the fire of God to come and touch your heart. You need to be a, at a place that when the Lord speaks to you about possessions, if it's, and if it's him, there's nothing wrong with saying, okay, God, is that really you? Okay, I mean, you can get to a place that you have that type of relationship that you know that you know when it's God. But even if you're coming along, you could say, wow, Lord, that's kind of big. And you can push it away, and you can say, hold on, pray in the Holy Ghost, hold on, is that really you, Lord? And it'll be like a battering ram to your spirit. Boom, boom, boom. No matter what you do, you can't shake it. Morning, night, morning, night, it keeps coming. To your spirit, your head might be arguing, but in your spirit, you're flooded with peace. You know what you're supposed to do. Your head is arguing, but your spirit is saying, yes, yes, yes. And if you will obey, God will make a way. Hallelujah. I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. And I'm going to speak to people. Everybody should be wanting to go to the next level. Everybody should be wanting to give more. Whatever you gave last week, last month, last year, God always increases. He multiplies. You should always be setting your faith bigger. And then the last thing is this. Many people get stuck in a rut. Pastor Ron always says a rut is a grave with both ends kicked out. What's a rut? A rut is somebody that used to be a giver that's not a giver anymore because they went through some tough times. The Word of God works, and regardless if you went through a tough time, the Word of God is for the tough times and for every time. Many people need to stir up that gift that's within them. You need to go back to victories that you've had in your life where God has come through for you. And listen, if you ever were to sow a sacrificial seed, if you were ever to give God an offering that cost you nothing, an offering that cost, that cost something, I will not give the Lord an offering that costs nothing. To give a costly offering, to give it all, then you, for people that at once were in this place of being a giver, you need to rekindle that flame. Hallelujah. I was talking to a business guy in KBF. He comes to KBF. He's a Baptist. Comes to KBF. Doesn't even come to this church. Comes to KBF four times a year. Always sits in the back. Uh, about a year ago, he showed up at KBF. I saw him in the back. I was preaching, and the power of God fell on him. And I, and I said something that I had never said before, maybe two years ago. It came out of my spirit because I don't talk like this. I said, the Lord has put a mantle of treasury on you. I don't even talk like that. That's what came out of my spirit. I said, a mantle of treasury has just dropped on you, has dropped on you. Well, he falls out under the power of God. So I'm, I keep preaching, Kingdom Business Fellowship, advancing the kingdom of God through business. And then next thing you know, I felt, pick him up. Were you in that service? And I went, oh my gosh. I said, pick him up. He's a Baptist guy. Didn't even go to church here. I bring him up front. He's totally intoxicated with the Holy Spirit, drunk in the Holy Ghost. He comes up, I put the mic to his mouth, I had no idea what was happening, and he tells a testimony like this. And this is for somebody, and you really need to listen to this. He said, you know, I went through a downturn with the economy. I'm in commercial real estate. I was always wealthy, always did well. My business took such a crash in commercial real estate that it went down to almost anything. He said, I started drinking, started doing some things I had never done before. He got mad at God. He said, my wife was going to leave me. He was in a terrible situation because of money. And he goes, you know what? He goes, but then I, saw, I started sewing again. I started giving again. It wasn't nearly what I used to do, but I, I turned my life around. I repented. I started sewing. And he said, I've come into KBF, and I'm just, you know, hearing the word encouraging me that whatever I put my hand to shall prosper. The Lord's given me the anointing to create wealth, establish his covenant, and all of this. And he said, then I decided to come tonight. The power of God hit me. You said there's a, tre a mantle of treasury on me. And he said, this is what happened. He said, today, my commission check was $1.1 million. His check, just his commission check, the day that he came to KBF was $1.1 million. And he said, the Lord turned my whole life around. But you know what he had to do? He had to start giving again. 
He had stopped giving. He had, because things got tough, he stopped giving. He stopped doing the very thing that he needed to do. I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. I give it all. And so I can just tell you from our experience from 25 years ago, coming here and coming to Bible college and and going around the world with Dr. Rodney, I tell you, at some of the times that we had the biggest needs in the ministry, he sowed the biggest seeds. The biggest need is the biggest seed. I can't tell you how many times, because I happen to know what's going on with the finances and everything, especially on the road and crusades and stuff. I cannot remember one big crusade. Now, I don't even know if I should say stuff like this, but I'm trying to encourage you. I can not think of one big crusade that the Lord spoke him to do that we ever had the money for, ever, ever. It wasn't like, oh, praise God, we got 500,000 in the bank, we can handle this. I've never heard those words ever come out of his mouth, ever. It's just, the Lord spoke to me, floor it. Give, 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 floor it. And the money would come in every time, every time. And some of them, maybe it didn't come in, but the next city it came in. Faith begins where the will of God is known. So you have these desires and dreams and closing, you got these big things in your heart. Do not back off on your giving. And I shared this morning, just touched on Malachi. Will a man rob God? You say, where have I robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You're cursed with a curse. Return unto me and I'll return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing and rebuke the devourer. I said this this morning and it's so key. Your tithe is for your protection where God rebukes the devourer, but your offerings are for your production. Offerings are about future income. Tithe is about past income. Do you understand that? You can't tithe on something you've never got. So really where people rob God a lot of times, if you're a tither, you're not robbing God in your tithes, but you're robbing him in the offering. And the Lord will speak to you like when he said to David, David said, I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. I give it all. And and Ornan said, did you say it was for the Lord? Yeah, absolutely not. I give it all. Listen, remember this. In the world, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. If you're going to buy a car, a house, an RV, or anything else, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Strip the world of its wealth. Get the best deal. Absolutely, those deals are for you, but you cannot take that mentality into your giving to God. You can't negotiate with God. And I'm going to rebuke some people real quick right now. Don't ever come to the book table and try to negotiate on the product sales. What is wrong with you? You know, do you think I could get that Bible for 300? No, I will pay full price. No, you can't do stuff like that. You can't jip God. You can't go to God with some poverty, stingy, mingy, tightwad Scrooge mentality like you're going to negotiate with God. He's the king of glory. I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. Go to Amazon. Go to Barnes and Noble. Strip them of all of it. Get them to give it to you for free. But don't take that mentality over into the kingdom of God for the things of God if you want to be blessed. Hallelujah. The world system is based on supply and demand. The kingdom's business is based on seed time and harvest. Hallelujah. Whatsoever a man sows, that and that only will a man reap. Period. Don't put a question mark where God puts a period. God's word is true. Your situations and circumstances need to change. You need to get right with God and you need to say, I'm believing for some big things. I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. I give it all. If you speak to me, Lord, about it, I'll do it. Many people have backed off from giving. Many people have never entered into giving. But many people have backed off because of situation. Well, the economy, COVID, this. God is your source and supply, not your job, not the world. The creator of heaven and earth, his treasury is full, and he's ready to pour it out to every single person. You just got to say, Lord, you speak to me about a seed, I'll obey. Your seed, remember, your seed makes a way. As you obey, your seed will bring you into what you're believing God for. And what you need to do is say, Lord, what's the seed? What's an offering that costs me something? Anytime God's speaking to you about something big or a big move or direction, usually he touches something or he asks you. And you might not want to hear this, and I better close now on this. If you don't obey God, I'm going to tell you something I've learned. If God speaks to you about a big seed, something that's big, you know, to you, special to you, if you don't obey, it's fine. It's a free will thing. But what I've learned about God is God's not going to ask you for that again. Someone said, oh, praise God, I'm off the hook. It always increases it from there. (laughs) 
don't worry, he's not going to ask for that again. Because you denied it, denied it, denied it, it's going to be a step up from there. I don't know if you want to hear that or not, but it's obedience is better than sacrifice to do what God tells you to do. You need to be willing to say, God, I will not give you an offering that costs nothing. I give it all. Lord, anything I have, if you require it, I'll do it. If you don't, you know, then that's fine. You, there's some things you have that God will never require. There's other things that you have temporary for it to go through you. That's just the way it is. Hallelujah. Where your treasure is, there is your heart. If God touches your treasure, it reveals your heart. And if you have a heart after God like David did, then if God, when he ran into trouble, he said, Lord, he thought the only way I'm getting out of this is I'm going to give. I'm going to give the best I have. I'm going to pour my heart out to God. And because where your treasure is, there is your heart. He put everything together. He also paid for the house of the Lord. If I can't build it, I'll pay for it. He not only paid for it from the kingdom, he said, I have a private treasury. And he ended up giving billions and billions of dollars in gold and silver and things out of a personal private treasury. Ladies, all of you have a private stash. Everybody, every lady's got a private stash of money stuck somewhere. Husbands, if you don't know that, they do. There's a place. Every person has a private treasury, a private thing that they're not going to touch. Well, what happens if the Lord touches it? What if the Lord speaks to you about it? And not only did David pay for the house of the Lord out of his own personal private treasury, the people got so excited, they said, if you do this, David, we're going to do this. And they gave more than David did out of his personal private treasury. Then everybody rejoiced. They had, you know, they were all rejoicing. And then David says, who are we and what are we people that we can even rejoice at this act of giving? For surely we just gave back unto you what you gave into our hand. Or in other words, we're stewards and all you're doing by acting and doing what God tells you to do is really giving God back what he already blessed you with. So really, in the real reality of the fact of the matter is as a steward, it's really not that big of a deal because if someone gave you a car to use for a week and then came back and said, can I have that car back in a week? You would probably think, well, it's their car. Of course, thank you for letting me use it for a week and give it back. That's what stewardship is like. But if you say, no, I'm not giving you your car back, then that person's a thief. Great example there, huh? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> stewardship is about a free will blessing God. I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. So when I talked about the different seeds we sowed, who would have thought when we sowed into the Bible school, we'd become the deans? Who would have thought when we sowed into New York, we would go there? Who would have thought when we sowed $10,000 into that big Africa crusades when pastors Rodney and Adonica lost their daughter and they said, we vow 100 million souls and a billion dollars into world missions. What dreams and desires has God put in your heart? I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. I give it all. Lord, whatever you say for me to do, I'll do. Who would be willing to say that? You know, it takes faith to even say that because you might be thinking, what if he actually says something? Well, what if he actually says it because you're going to go and do those things? Hallelujah. I want you to ask the Lord what he'd have you do, and I'm going to ask you to ask the Lord what's a costly offering, what's a costly gift to you. You know, and everybody's at a different level. You know, sometimes the tightest, stingiest scrooges are not the widows or people that make under... Thirty or forty thousand dollars a year. It's the people that make six, seven digits because they got to hold on to everything and they know everything. No, you got to do what the Lord tells you to do. There's people that could sow, like I kept mentioning, ten thousand dollars. There's people that could sow ten thousand dollars. It was never convenient for us to sow ten thousand. Matter of fact, when we sowed the ten thousand for Soweto, we didn't have it. The Lord spoke to us. We both came in agreement. I put it on a credit card. I didn't even have it. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you what the Lord told me to do. And in three months, $38,000 came into us personally through unexpected sources of supply. But we knew it was God. So ask the Lord what he'd have you do and do something substantial and say, bless God. And as for my prayer, listen, this is September, September, October, November, December. We're linking our faith that by December 31st that you're going to have such an abundance and such an increase and double heaps come in that more will come in in these next four months that came in in the entire year. I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing. I give it all. Hallelujah. Who believes the Lord can do that? Well, I want you to ask the Lord what he'd have you do. That was part two of our story. 
And anybody that's used of God, anybody that's used of God in the anointing is a giver because they love God and they realize God gave it to them. Ask them what he'd have you do. And I want you to ask God, what's an what's a offering that would cost me something? What's not an offering that I normally do? What's something that would cost me? There's people that have never given $1,000 ever in their life, and they easily could. They easily could. It wouldn't change their life. They wouldn't be on the streets. They'd never done it. There's people that have never given 100 bucks or 10,000. Don't do what you normally do. Say, Lord, what's an offering that costs me something? What's an offering that says I give it all? Why? Because it's for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Father, I pray for each and every person. Lord, even as I look back at our life and the testimonies that we had in those times that you spoke to us about those sacrificial seeds, we never understood what the future held, but we did obey, and we look back and see the victories. I pray you speak to the hearts of your people here and watch them by way of television, that, Father, they have dreams and desires that have not come to pass. They even don't even exactly know what the future holds, but you do. You know the end from the beginning, Lord, and I thank you, Father, that as you speak to them about a seed, as you speak to them about what they're supposed to do, that you'll make a way, you'll open a door of opportunity for them, and that increase and multiplication would come, and that you would honor that sacrificial seed, that alabaster box, that as they say, I will not give the Lord an offering that costs me nothing, I give it all, that Father, you would honor that just like you did in your word, and you're no respecter of people, and we expect nothing less than to hear miracles from heaven in Jesus' name, and I call in a quickening, a speed up process, September, October, November, December, the best months they've ever had in Jesus' name, that the rain of heaven would pour on them, the blessings of God would pour on them as they obey in Jesus' name. If you believe it, give the Lord a great shout of victory. Hallelujah! Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.